Welcome back to our travel log in the beautiful South Island of New Zealand. In this episode, we make our way to Cromwell in Arrowtown, we manage to pluck some apples, drink more wine, and have some food that's smoked in a wine barrel. It's about a two hour journey from Twizel where we stayed last night to Cromwell, but no one's complaining because the sights of the rugged mounds reflecting off the Dunstan River is just stunning. First stop, lunch at Carrick Winery and Restaurant. You definitely want to make a stop over the single estate vineyard because this is where you can enjoy food and wine while overlooking the stunning Banuburn Inlet. Simply gorgeous. If you're not in a rush, you may want to consider cycling around the area as well. We'd have loved to stay the afternoon, but we had to go to Jackson's Orchard to pick some fruits. I personally would never buy an apple in a shop. <laughs> oh. So we're here at Jackson's, Jackson's Orchard. Orchard. They do these tours and you can come and uh, pick your apples as well. Mm. Oh, one just came off. Yeah, that. You can eat it straight away. <laughs> What a treat, you know, eating apples they mm. pick right off the tree. Doesn't get any fresher than this. Oh. So they grow in the trees out like that, so they add the wires as the tree matures, and that's, they won't go any higher than that. But because the V lets more light into the canopy, okay. so you actually get better yield. It's lovely driving through these V-shaped trellis, and it's also nice as a backdrop for your wedding photos. During the thinning season, they will actually remove some of the smaller ones. Like this one here, will probably be removed. These are called honey crisp. Mm, fresh off the tree, worth eating. But uh, make sure uh, when you come to the orchard, you pick up a fruit, just have a look at it before you bite. Because I bit into that and it tasted like blue cheese. So I hope I don't get a diarrhea later. <laughs> this is a walnut tree. This is a walnut picker. This is how you pick walnuts. Go slowly, dear. You're too aggressive. Yeah. You say too aggressive, right? So this is how they pick walnuts. And uh... Okay, my Kung Fu not so good. <laughs> I gotta do this. Oh, wow. Good job. <laughs> you managed to do it. Yeah, of course. Hope you guys have a really great time. Lovely to meet you all. Next up, Misha's Vineyard for some wine tasting. 80% of all Pinot Noir in New Zealand comes out of Central Otago. It was a really relaxing session and we even had a little lesson on what Pinot Noir means. And so Pinot in French is pine cone. Noir is black because it's a black skin. And this is Pinot Blanc. And this is Pinot Gris. And this very much looks like Gewurz. It's got a slightly sort of lavender sort of colour. We're trying the Gewurz Tremina. I hope I got it right. <laughs> and this is a dessert wine. It's looking really good. There you go. Mm, really nice. Hey, how you doing? I'm Andy from Burn Cottage, uh, Central Otago. This is our little Burn Cottage vineyard. Marcus and Diane bought this in 2002 as a bare piece of land. So we've run this vineyard biodynamically since inception. The difference between biodynamic and organic? I suppose in a way it's probably organics on steroids, in a way. Oh, so okay. we're, we're not using any artificial chemicals, okay. pesticides, or something like that. This environment is so suitable for Pinot Noir that Pinot Noir has become the key variety for the region. Mm. Pinot Noir. So we've got three vineyards. So we've got the Burn Cottage Vineyard, which is our baby. This is, this is... It was just lovely to be in the vineyard itself to taste the nectar of the vines. So we've just got the keys to our house. <laughs> Come on in, let's take a look. Look at that view, my goodness. Wow, 
Oh. Now this is Lake Dunstan and we've been traveling and been seeing this beautiful lake along the way and now we're going to be staying on the lake itself. Bedrooms and baths are clean, comfortable and well heated. And the villa is also spacious with a fully equipped kitchen. But nothing can beat the incredible view of the lake and mountain range. Quentin, the owner, my father, him and his best friend were by the vineyard. And they'd just been fishing in the river and they caught trout. And they wanted to cook it, but there's a complete fire bend because it's so dry. And they found an old planter in a wine barrel. So they dug it out and they decided to build a fire inside. And that's where the idea came about. And that was 20 years ago. And now this is what he's made. So the wood itself adds a flavor, the French oak, but also the wood chips that we add to it. So These are used wine barrels? They are, so it's right. a good way to recycle them as well. Once these ones are retired, we then turn this wood into platters. So nothing oh. gets wasted. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yes, they don't waste any of the wood. In fact, our dinner was served on an old wine barrel lid. This is a very hearty, no-nonsense meal with lots of meat and seafood. Uh, so sad, today's the last day here in New Zealand. No, I know, we've been having so much fun mm. driving around, you know, looking at all the countryside. It's beautiful, isn't it? But last night... Ah, uh, billions of stars. <laughs> last night I took that really beautiful picture. Finally, the guys cleared up. Although today is the last day, but we still got quite a few interesting things. We're going to be going to the Cromwell Farmers Market, doing some wine tasting mm. and ending up at... Uh, Arrow Town yes. to catch the uh, autumn leaves. Mm. Make sure you uh, tune in to the end and then after that we'll be back in Singapore already. Yeah. We did a quick walk about the Cromwell Heritage Precinct, which was quite quaint. And then we went to the weekend farmer's market, where we got to try some artisanal olive oil, lavender spray, <laughs> and some coffee. Then it's over to the beautiful Arrow Town, which used to be a gold mining town. Lunch was at the dishery restaurant where we had fried chicken waffles, fried brussels sprouts and buttermilk pancakes. I must admit it's not the best we've had, but it is conveniently located right next to the Chinese settlement. It was heartbreaking to see how these early Chinese miners really struggled living in such small, tight living conditions. Nonetheless, Arrowtown is very beautiful in autumn and it's something you'll never see in Singapore. Do take a walk down the main street to check out some of the shops and pick up some curios and maybe some gold, maybe some winter wear made of merino wool. You may also want to go to the other side of town to the Royal Burn Farm shop where local celebrity chef Nadia Lim sells some of her produce. But we need to squeeze in one more stop before heading to the airport. So Amis Field has been around since 1988. So we planted this first vine there and we were focusing on sparkling wine. Okay. Our owner is John Darby, so it's a family business. He went into Champagne to learn a little bit more about it and then realised he wanted to have some other table wines and other varieties. So he teamed up with some of the pioneers of the region. As you can see on the list, a big focus on Pinot Noir but also a lot of other varieties. This is yeah. liquid honey. It just stays on the glass. The Amsfield restaurant and cellar door was crowned Restaurant of the Year by Amex in 2022. So we were glad to have been able to try some of their snacks, which were very interesting. Too bad we had a plane to catch, otherwise we would have loved to spend more time at this beautiful estate. This is Sue. Sue has been our driver when we went out from Christchurch into Arrowtown and she's been amazing and she's from Canterbury Trails. Hi everybody! <laughs> Canterbury Trails has been very good bringing us around New Zealand so definitely I recommend using them, alright? Okay, bye! See you soon! Then we took one last long look at the beautiful landscape 
here at Queenstown International Airport before boarding our flight home. Happy eating and safe travels.